After extensive testing, what is very apparent is that the 21-pin version of the HM7000TXS Bluetooth decoder will fit pretty much anything along with its speaker. A big hello to you, it's great to see you and I hope I find you well. I'm Jenny Kirk, welcoming you up here to Weir Yard and today we're back on the subject of the HM7000 Bluetooth decoders from Hornby. And this is a follow-up to the Will It Fit Next 18 edition that I did a little while ago where I got pretty much every Next 18 equipped class of locomotive that I could lay my hands on and tested the fit with the decoders from Hornby. And actually it wasn't as bad as a lot of people online have tried to make out. It didn't fit in a lot of them, but it did come quite close. And if you're prepared to do a little bit of modification, there is scope for the version one decoders to get into quite a few of those locomotives. And there was one in particular where I managed to get it into the Planet Industrials Victory class. Not just the decoder, but a power bank as well, with a tiny amount of modification. And that has become a champion loco up here on Weir Yard as a result. Off the back of that, a lot of people asked me in the comments and on a number of different groups online about doing something similar for the other form factors of the decoders, because there's a lot of misinformation out there, people making claims about them not fitting most locomotives. So I took on that challenge and Hornby very kindly sent me a 21 pin decoder so I could repeat the exercise and I got out a whole load of 21 pin equipped locomotives and started working my way through. And as you'll see in this video, there's some quite surprising results. But we're getting a little bit ahead of ourselves. I'd just like to also take this moment to ask if you would care to tickle that like button, maybe share this video to social media, and uh, if you really do like the content we're creating, consider subscribing to the channel and ringing the bell to be the first to know about new videos as and when they go up. But come with me in association with Trainomatic, makers of DCT decoders and accessories that are designed by enthusiasts for enthusiasts. Find the full range available to order now at tramfabrique.co.uk. Additional support comes from This is Clark Railworks and this is what we do. You'll know us from Ellis Clark Trains and you'll get the same friendly expertise with us too. We've got a huge range of pre-owned model railways from all your favourite manufacturers and maybe some you hadn't heard of before. It's the place to come for quality. We don't stock substandard models and everything we sell is fully tested and photographed by model railway experts. No matter whether you model double O gauge, N, HO or more, we have sought after models from all around the world with new listings added every weekday. Check out what's available now at ClarkRailworks.com and don't miss out on your latest logo. But come with me and let's see if we can get these decoders to fit into some of these locomotives and dispel some of the wild rumours that are flying around on the internet or maybe even clarifying and confirming some of them. And for me, the Bluetooth decoders have been something of a paradigm shift in the way that we control trains. And it's not actually just that Bluetooth element, although that is quite a nice touch. But it's the fact that you can just download new locomotive sound suites and almost like try before you buy. If you've got a locomotive, you think, oh, well, I might get sound for that. You can get one of your other uh, Bluetooth decoder equipped locos to uh, download that sound, try it out, see what it sounds like before you buy. And there's no limit on the number of times that you can change the sound suite on a decoder. I also like the really clear graphical user interface and it's something that editing CVs has always been this black art, kind of like trying to get a computer to run on DOS. And what this uh, program has done with the app is actually made it so, so clear. It's like upgrading from DOS to Windows. And if you're not old enough to remember that happening, then uh, ask somebody who was there at the time just how annoying DOS was and getting a computer running and how much of a difference Windows made to all that. But I'm starting to waffle. You came here for that 21 pin decoder fitting. So let's get on and test as many locos as we can get our hands on. <laughs> Thank you. 
The Will It Fit Next 18 HM7000 Bluetooth decoder video that I did actually went down really, really well for having a broad cross section of Next 18 fitted locomotives tested just to see what would really fit. Off the back of that, I'm going to be doing another one, this time exploring 21 pin equipped locomotives and seeing just which ones the decoders will fit into. And again, I'd like to thank Hornby for sending over a 21 pin Bluetooth decoder to enable this to go ahead. I have got a Daypole Class 73. A Bankman Class 45, which will also cover the 44s and 46s. The 21 pin equipped Hornby Class 56. Bankman Class 37, the slightly older type, but still with the 21 pin interface. Next to that, we have the Daypole Class 29. Then the Hellion Metropolitan Electric. Behind that, it is the Bankman 241, which also covers the Class 25s. And then the Bachman prototype Deltic. We've got the Ivor Atlantic. And there is the Robinson 04. Bachman City Class GWR type. 21 pin equipped Class 20. Bachman Class 47. Kerno Model Center Class 41. Hellion Class 86. We've got a 4F from Bachman, which should also cover the 3Fs as well, which have a very similar tender. Moving further along, C-Class from Bachman. Behind that, the Super D G2A, again, Bachman. Moving to the back, we have the Irish Railway Models Metropolitan A-Class. Acura Scale, Class 55 Deltic. Bachman Class 42, also standing in for the Class 43 variant that they do. Hellion Class 25. And then I've just got a tender there for showing you how to fit it into the KR Models GT3. And that brings up all of the Class 21 equipped locomotives that I've dug out for this video. So let's get on and let's see what fits in what. The first locomotive up is the Class 56 from Hornby. It's the same model that's been available over the years with an 8-pin interface, but the newest version is equipped with a 21-pin interface. So I'm just going to take the body off this. Looking inside the locomotive, I've actually already fitted this as part of the ABC testing with an 8-pin decoder through a 21 to 8-pin adapter. And this is actually a much more space-intensive way of fitting these decoders in. So if you just put the 21-pin decoder straight on those headers, there is absolutely tons of space. I've got the speaker here in one of the slightly larger enclosures, which is a perfect fit from side to side, up at this end, over the transmission. There's also plenty of space here if you want to put a power pack in, and they are a perfect width fit. So first up, we've got one for one with the Hornby Class 56, will definitely fit. The next model that we've got to show you is the Bachman Class 37. It's not the most recently tooled version, but it's the previous one. 21 pin socket, all wheel drive. And I'm just going to take the body off this. And this is sound fitted. But what I'm going to do is uh, do a test fit with the Bluetooth decoder and just see if it all fits. There is a Class 37 sound file, so natively this is already supported in full if we can get the decoder in. With the decoder that was in it taken out, it's actually quite interesting. The decoders are exactly the same size. That one's a sound decoder, just uh, a regular Class 37 sound decoder. And this is the Bluetooth decoder HM7000 with sound, and they're actually exactly the same size and these will also use any onboard uh, speaker setups that uh, the locomotives may come from the factory with or may already have and that means that this is a very straightforward DCC fit with the HM7000 decoder and let's just slide that body on and it goes all the way down perfect fit so that's two for two 
Next up is the Daypole Class 73. And again, this is one where there is already a really good sound file available for a Class 73. So if it fits, this is a really great option. Certainly, there never was a TTS version of the Class 73 from Hornby. So this is quite an interesting development. And as you can see here, I already fitted this one with a 21-pin HM7000 decoder. It's a perfect fit. Uh, this is the earlier style of circuit board in the Daypole 73, so the decoder goes in the other way up. That's perfectly okay. Still plenty of space. And as you can see at this end, we've got the largest speaker enclosure that Hornby provide for the enclosed speaker. It fits here like it was made for it. And again, we've got a power bank that uh, clips in in the remainder of the space so perfectly, you'd think that they were designed for this locomotive. So that's three for three with a perfect fit. The next locomotive I've got here is the Bankman Class 45 with the 21 pin chassis. And this should be considered an equal representation for the Class 46 and the Class 44 from the Bankman range with the 21 pin decoder. The top comes off with actually quite a lot of different screws and uh, what I'm going to do is just take out the decoder that's already in there. In the uh, speaker well I've currently actually got a stay alive so I'm going to leave that be but what it shows is that there is space for quite a large speaker enclosure and the number of different enclosures that Hornby do provide do give you ones that would be a perfect fit for that. So I'm going to go ahead and just move this out of the way so we can test fit that decoder. With the decoder now in place, I've just taken that one out temporarily. I'm just going to do a test fit getting the body back on, but as you can see, plenty of room in here and certainly for the speaker there's a huge well here you get the speaker into that or you could use one of the smaller speakers up at the other end and use the well for a power bank if that's the route that you want to go down i'm just going to test fit the body back on and I can already see that that is a perfect fit so Bankman classes 44 45 and 46 that is a success Next up is the Daypole Class 29, and this also will cover the Class 21 variant. So I'm going to go ahead and get the body off. I can already see that this is going to be an easy fit, similar design to the Class 73. Uh, we're just going to have to bend this component out of the way. The decoder itself fits perfectly within the space. It's a little bit bigger than the one that's in it, but certainly there's plenty of space there for it. And I've got here the largest speaker enclosure, and that is an absolutely perfect fit like it was made for the recess with enough space for a power bank to also fit alongside it. So again, the Class 29 and also the Class 21s, exactly the same internal layout, will be a perfect fit for the largest speaker enclosure and a power bank if you want to go down that route. With the Irish Railway Models A-Class Metropolitan Locomotive, this has a factory fitted speaker, so we don't have to worry about uh, fitting the speaker arrangement in. In fact, if I take this out, you can see the speaker right there. The sound decoder is already in there, and I'm just gonna have a look, and I think, that might just fit in. This is actually about the same size as an ESU lock sound decoder. So I'm going to go ahead, carefully remove this decoder, and I'm going to put this in. One of the other things that I do want to check with this is whether or not the onboard Stay Alive will work with this decoder, as it's currently set up for the decoder that's in it. So that will be another separate test that I'll do, and I'll report back. Okay, I have tested this on the layout. The internal speaker that it comes fitted with sounds really great with the decoder. However, the onboard Stay Alive doesn't work with the HM7000 decoder, but as you can see, it is a perfect fit, almost like it was made to fit into this model. So that is, again, 
another perfect fit. Up next is a test fit in the KR Models GT3. The decoder is all in the tender, really easy to get into. And there it is, perfect fit. We've got the pre-fitted speaker and it all works. So again, another easy fit and that is exactly the same as the ESU lock sound that would be in here if you went for the sound option. And by extension of that, then that suggests that any locomotive that will fit a lock sound 5 will natively support the 21 pin HM7000 decoder. So we could add to this the KR models fell as well will also be a perfect fit. Next up is the Hellion Metropolitan Bobo Electric. And uh, it's quite easy to get into this. I've already loosened everything off and uh, it's got a 21 pin socket. I'm just gonna remove this decoder that I find within. And this looks as though it might be the very first tight fit. Let me just, oh no, but it is going in. So the decoder itself fits in quite nicely. In terms of a speaker, there is no factory fitted speaker in this model. So I am going to look to the actual uh, Hornby speaker. And as with all of uh, the Next18 and 21 pin decoders, they include in the pin arrangement the pins that are necessary to be able to uh, just uh, put the sound straight across to a factory fitted speaker. What I can see there is that uh, we've actually got a reasonable amount of space available just above the bogey towers. And I'm going to just have a quick look at different speaker enclosures that are available. So I've got the larger of the self-contained cubes and I think with this, let's just experiment just a little bit. I think that this will sit okay on top of the bogey tower. And that is, I'm going to say, I don't know, which one do we go for? The bigger one. So I've also got the next size down and the smallest as well. I think that it's a toss up between this one and this one. So uh, I'm actually going to, I'm going to be a bit daring. I'm going to go with this one. So I'm going to peel the sticky off and very, very carefully apply the speaker to the enclosure. Just bear in mind that once these are in place, it's very difficult to remove them without damaging the uh, speaker cone. And I can see already we need to make sure that we have the space. So let's just carefully lever that back out. We need to plug this in before we plug the whole assembly into place. And it's quite easy to do this. Let's just make sure we've got a little bit extra on the side there now. And that is where we're starting to get a little bit of a tight fit. But there, it does fit. There is enough space at the side to be able to do that. And then we can fit the speaker hidden away down there. And I would just use some tape to make sure that the wire is kept out of the way. A little bit of super glue will attach this Possibly to the cab back might be the best place to put it. And uh, that's quite flat, so a bit of super glue, we can put that in. And actually looking at that, if we'd have gone on that option, the larger speaker enclosure would have been absolutely fine. So even though there's a little bit more work involved, this is a perfect fit. For the next model, I uh, had a little bit of difficulty getting the top of the Backman 24-1, so I decided to substitute out for the Backman Class 25. The reason for this is also that these are very common. There's been a lot of releases over the years, and it's a very similar chassis to the Class 24 model that they did up until a few years ago. So this is a very, very common chassis, 
and instantly we can see that this one is fitted with an ESU lock sound 5. That is exactly the same form factor as the uh, HM7000 and it's already got a speaker in here which was fitted for the ESU and soldered to the tabs on the board that works just fine and uh, the space that is available is more than enough that for example if you wanted to this speaker enclosure is perfect for fitting in there so that would be a very very straightforward fit we're getting through the diesel and electric locomotives. Next up is the very, very popular Bachmann Deltic prototype. So I'm going to get the body off this and then let's do a test fit. Inside the model, it's uh, another standard 21 pin interface. And what's clear is there is a huge amount of space for both power banks and for a speaker enclosure. And I'm just going to offer up the largest of the speaker enclosures and that looks to just about, yep, yeah, that would. We're going to have to move some of these wires over, but that is actually a fit for the largest of the speaker enclosures. So that is a really good start. And uh, just very carefully remove the 21 pin decoder that's there already. And line up, push fit. Plenty of room at the side for the connectors, both for the power bank and for the speaker. And these wires are long enough that the power bank and the speaker have enough uh, a give to be able to get to exactly where you want them. And with a class 55 sound file available, hopefully later this year, then this is a really great bet for models such as this. And I can see these proving very popular. So that is another perfect fit. Next up, I've got the Class 41 from Kerno Model Center. I'm just going to very carefully lift the top free, and there's quite a few wires there, so just need to be a little bit careful. Again, we've got this uh, area for a speaker enclosure, and that just clips straight in with enough space at the back, just like we saw in the Daypole Class 73, for the power bank to be fitted side to side. And uh, I can already see here, this is gonna be no problem whatsoever. Just very carefully rock this free and very gently lower that decoder into place. For now, I'm just gonna move that out as we've already got this speaker attached. And we can already see that this is going to be another super easy fit. So just uh, get the uh, body back on. There's no screws on this. It's just simply a push fit. Just a little bit of pressure needed at one end. And that's gone in absolutely fine. So again, this would be a really powerful installation with the biggest speaker enclosure and a power bank. There really would be no stopping this locomotive with a HM7000 installation inside it. Next up is the Backman Class 47. Not the most recently tooled example, but recent enough that it has a 21 pin decoder socket and this has uh, what looks to be a soundtracks uh, decoder. It is a sound decoder and looking to that, that is the same footprint as the HM7000. We've got enough room here for speaker enclosure. Looks as though that's going to, again, uh, just a little bit too narrow for the larger of the speaker enclosures, but it is more than possible to fit one of the other style of speaker enclosures in there without any great issue. And there's room at the front of the locomotive here for the power bank on its side. So yet again, another successful fit there. I think there is a class 47 sound file that is uh, forthcoming on the list too. So again, I think this is gonna prove a very popular conversion. As you've seen so far, 
we've not been stopped by any of the 21 pin decoder fitted chassis. Now once we move on to the steam locomotives I think that may change but we've still got a few of the diesel and electrics to go so let's crack on. You've got here the Backman 21 pin equipped class 20 and again another model that there are a lot of about on the market but this might be the first of the difficult installs. Uh, at the moment we've got it fitted with, uh, this is actually a TTS decoder conversion and uh, the speaker obviously fits quite nicely immediately under the grill. That's actually quite a big speaker that we've got in there that does fit. Probably it'd be safest to go for one of the smaller speaker enclosures but nonetheless it does provide a good sound. And then in terms of other space, I'm just looking on there. The decoder's currently there, and then we've got a 21 to 8 pin adapter that's been adapted. So the decoder itself, the footprint, does go within what's currently in there. And let's just check on width, and that would appear to definitely fit within the uh, footprint of where the body is going to come down. So I'm going to call that a definitely uh, a, a relatively easy fit and again class 20 is one of the sound files so that is despite the fact that this is probably one of the tighter installs on the 21 pin equipped diesel locomotives that is definitely a very very doable prospect. Next up I've got the Bankman Class 42. Now I will say the later tooled Class 43 um, I've got a ESU Lock Sound V5 in with a full sound installation, works lovely so I know that the HM7000 will fit that. The Class 42, I've already loosened up the top. This is an older tooled model and dates back to a time where there was less thought given for a sound installation. Uh, the decoder that's on there is uh, factory equipped. This model actually came with this decoder. So I'm just going to very carefully uh, leave it that clear. Put that to one side. And then we're looking at the uh, HM7000. And that fits actually well within... The footprint there's actually a white outline which I'm guessing just shows you what to keep clear for the decoder it fits it's not close to the sides and then it would simply be a case of I guess my personal preference here just because of space uh, that enclosure is going to be too tall so we'd be looking at the smaller enclosure and I'd actually be inclined to super glue that to the circuit board. I know some people are probably getting a bit edgy at the idea of doing that. Um, or you could use one of those sticky double sided foam pads. Either way would be good. So a small speaker installation, but the decoder is definitely fitting within that footprint. Space for a power bank, I would say not without any modification, but certainly this is another relatively straightforward fit. And there is a class 42 in the Hornby Railroad range. Now I've not seen a listing for the HM7000 sound decoder to match up with that, but I suspect it's only a matter of time before all the models in the Hornby range uh, do get their own sound profiles and that will play into the hands of anybody looking to fit these decoders into other manufacturers models. This next model is one which I've seen a lot of people asking about and it's the Acura Scale Class 55 and uh, I'm going to uh, try and do a fit with this. It's really easy to get into this. The roof is just held on by a couple of magnets. What I would say is that the space for the decoder is a little bit awkward. It kind of fits back in underneath the body. Just looking that way, there is a reasonable amount of space. I suspect you could slip a power bank in and under if you needed to. It comes factory fitted with speakers, so there's no need to worry about adding them yourself. And I'm just going to carefully uh, take out the decoder that I've got in here. 
And you see it's just a little bit more involved. Because this has a factory fitted speaker in it, I'm going to just take out the uh, speaker. And that does fit all the way in, which is probably no surprise because if you get the factory sound option on these, they come with a lock sound V5. And there we go. That's a perfect install and there's still plenty of space. I'm just going to just poke around in there. There's definitely a lot of space for the power bank to slip in that way and a lot of space either side for those plugs to go on. Uh, although I suspect that the decoder, even though the locomotive comes with a factory built in stay alive in the A class, which is from the sister company to Acura scale, it didn't use that uh, stay alive. So I'm not expecting the HM7000 to use the stay alive that's already in here. And then it's just simply a case of putting the roof back on. Perfect install in minutes. Next up is the Hellion Class 25. I've already got the uh, top loosened up. Be careful because it is tethered by some wires for the upper lights. I've actually got this fitted with a smart power pack and uh, an experimental Plux 22 decoder from Trainomatic, which is wired into a 21 pin breakout board. And uh, this fits pretty well within the space. As you can see, there's actually a lot more space inside this model than there was in the Backman one. So much so that I would envisage that the largest speaker enclosure will fit in this as well as space for a power bank. And again, you can see that the decoder will fit well within the footprint of the body. It's actually quite a spacious model, much more so than the Backman 25. Next up, I've got the uh, Hellion Class 86, already loosened up the top. These are just a clip fit. Carefully take that away. There are no wires. And I can see inside that we've actually got some quite generous spaces. So I can see first up, we've got plenty of room in here for the uh, HM7000 decoder. In terms of space available, we're not going to get the biggest one in place. Let's just see. That one might be slightly too big as well. But the smaller of these is definitely perfect for this. And you do get a good sound quality from these, I must admit. And there's space next to it for the power bank as well. And uh, let's just see how far these go. Actually, yeah, there's more than enough wire to stretch the full length of the locomotive. So again, another fairly easy fit from the Hellion Class 86. There is a Class 87 in Hornby's range, and I am interested to see whether a sound file does appear for them, and that might be a good approximation to go into the Class 86. Next up, I've got the Backman 4F, and this will also cover for the Backman 3F as well. And there's a number of different variants of this being brought out over the years. A lot of weight in the top of that tender. That is a metal casting. And inside here, we've got room for, let's just see. So that is flat. So anything that sticks out from there, there's going to be plenty of room. And that also suggests that might even, let's just see, uh, no, that is unfortunate. That would almost have been a perfect installation, but it doesn't matter because we can still fit the, uh, the smaller enclosure. It's good for the steam locomotives. Just going to see whether that lid will go back down and on and that definitely does fit on over the top of this speaker enclosure so again let's just offer that up with this speaker enclosure plenty of space i'm not convinced we'll be able to get a power bank in here quite so readily but that is definitely 
a uh, relatively straightforward install. Next up is the Bankman Ivor Atlantic, produced a little while back for the National Railway Museum. I've already loosened up the tender top and taken out the decoder that was in here. Now this is a capacitor that it just comes with. I don't actually know what this is for, but I doubt it is essential for operation, so you can just remove that. In terms of getting the decoder into place, and uh, there is space for a circular speaker enclosure underneath the metal plates. And it's just a shame that the HM7000 decoder series doesn't include an adapter to fit that speaker into this circular enclosure that's really, really common across multiple manufacturers. There is a bit of a, a recess in the front here, which means that even though it looks like we've got a lot of space in front of the decoder, there's not any space there really at all. And looking here inside, the speaker is best fitted on top of the metal weight. With this capacitor removed, we can fit in there at the very least the smallest speaker enclosure without any issue whatsoever. The space at the side of the decoder to plug in the speaker. And then all in all, we can just slide the tender body back on and uh, just get that to clip in. And there you can see we've got flush on the side of the tender. So that's gone in all the way. Next up is the Robinson 04 from Backman, and this will also cover the GWR 3000 class variant too. So I've already loosened up the tender. It's quite a roomy tender, and we can see inside I've actually got a smart power pack and one of those experimental uh, Plux 22 Trainomatic decoders wired to a 21 pin breakout board. But there is a lot of space in here and I can already see that the decoder only needs that much, leaving plenty of space actually for the larger of these long speaker enclosures would fit quite nicely in there. And there may even be room for a power bank as well. So a pretty straightforward fit for the Robinson 04. The GWR City Class is the next locomotive that we're going to do a trial fit on. And I'm beginning to think that actually the talk online that these decoders don't fit most locomotives is a load of rubbish because quite frankly, they've fitted perfectly in every locomotive I've tried so far. Now I've got two more after this and then I'm going to go straight for the most difficult locomotive with a 21 pin socket that I've found in my collection. But we're getting ahead of ourselves. So let's just do a test on this locomotive. Just get the tender body off. We've got a reasonable amount of space in the tender, which is going to allow for not only that decoder to fit in there instead of the one that's in, but we've also got room in front for a speaker enclosure too. So again, it's a really easy, straightforward fit. There's quite a theme coming in here. And I'm gonna go out on a limb and say that it's going to fit just fine in the next two locomotives. So let's just skip them and go straight to the most difficult and challenging 21 pin chassis locomotive that I have in my collection, the Hellion Class 14. The chassis was upgraded from the original 8-pin to a 21-pin variant, but not a lot else has changed inside. And I think that the biggest struggle, even if the decoder will fit, is where the speaker will go. So I'm going to get the body off and then see just what space is available. It's one of the most involved DCC fits of any 21-pin chassis, in fact the most involved. And I do this so you don't have to. So we've finally exposed the 21 pin decoder and I'm just going to very carefully just try and lift that. So that decoder is now out of the way. And this is where, let's just see, will this firstly fit? Yes, it does. And secondly, um, I'm not entirely sure 
if this locomotive has a factory fitted speaker. So I'm just going to test that now. I've done a little bit of testing and there is no factory fitted speaker on this model. The decoder on the face of it does appear to fit. And uh, the only thing I would suggest is that we're going to have to put the speaker into the cab. So I'm just going to do a test fit on this. It's, to be honest, one of the worst locomotives for DCC fitting, as you can see. It tends to uh, dis disassemble itself whilst you're doing it. So I'm just going to place the speaker into here. You will see it through the cab. That cannot be helped, unfortunately. It may well be that the smaller speaker enclosure would be better. So I'm just going to see now, will this fit? over the top. It's, it's a tight fit. Let's not pretend it's otherwise, but there. Clunk clip and it's gone into place. The wire there, we've found a gap. So even the most awkward of 21 pin fitted chassis does fit this decoder. And we would have to resolve to having the speaker in the cab and there's absolutely no room for a stay alive or power bank on this, but it does fit. After extensive testing, what is very apparent is that the 21 pin version of the HM7000 TXS Bluetooth decoder will fit pretty much anything along with its speaker. And in many instances, that speaker can be fitted in the largest enclosure and there's even room for a power pack in a great many of these locomotives. Even the hardest to fit, the Hellion Class 14, was possible to have the decoder fitted in there, and there's room in the cab for the speaker in one of the smaller enclosures. So my conclusion is, if you've got a 21-pin interfaced locomotive, you've got the means to add this decoder with comparative ease. Well, I hope you found today's video really informative. And as you saw there, it's probably simpler to say that uh, I couldn't find a locomotive that the 21 pin decoder wouldn't fit into. And even the Hellion Class 14 that recently got that 21 pin chassis upgrade where they, they put a 21 pin socket into what used to be an eight pin locomotive. I was quite impressed that the decoder just fitted in that. I was able to get the bonnet back on. And uh, as long as you're happy with the speaker in the cab, uh, then it really was quite an easy DCC fit. And on that note, there's an awful lot of DCC sound installations that people have been doing for years now where they've done just that with the speakers and even the stay alives in the cab. So there's no real difference there. I was really impressed with that. And the fact that when you size it up to that ESU lock sound version 5 decoder, which is a very, very common high spec sound decoder, the Hornby one was actually marginally smaller, which means that any locomotive that that ESU lock sound fits in, the Hornby TXS HM7000 one is going to as well. So as a 21 pin, will it fit exposition? Absolutely, 100% success. And I've got every faith that if I tried any of the other 21 pin equipped locomotives that I have, it's gonna fit in all of them. And the fact that you could get in the largest speaker enclosure and a power bank to boot in a great many of those just shows that the 21 pin format of the Bluetooth decoders at the very least is definitely one that you should not discount. And if anybody tells you, oh, it won't fit most locomotives, what you can say for certain now is they haven't even bothered trying. And what do you think about the HM7000 range of decoders? I'd love to hear from you in the comments section down below. What have been your experiences? Or indeed, what have been some of the failures maybe where you've taken on a locomotive hoping it'll fit and it just hasn't? Share your experiences and help out fellow modelers.
And don't forget that today we're supporting Arcadia Models Insure. Give Tim a ring or check out on his website and buy all of your Hornby HM7000 decoders, power banks and otherwise through him. We've got a link down below. It's not an affiliate link. We're just making sure that local model shops do get some of your love and support. Please also consider checking us out on Patreon and help us to keep making the videos that you want to see. And we've also got our fully stocked merch store with a great deal of uh, different t-shirts, hoodies and mugs and more with unique designs to this channel ready to go. But until next time, you take great care of yourself. Happy modelling. Bye for now. Today's video comes in association with Trainomatic makers of DCC decoders and accessories that are designed by enthusiasts for enthusiasts. Find the full range available to order now at tramfabrique.co.uk. Additional support is provided by This is Clark Railworks and this is what we do. You'll know us from Ellis Clark Trains and you'll get the same friendly expertise with us too. We've got a huge range of pre-owned model railways from all your favourite manufacturers and maybe some you hadn't heard of before. It's the place to come for quality. We don't stock substandard models and everything we sell is fully tested and photographed by model railway experts. No matter whether you model double O gauge, N, HO or more, we have sought after models from all around the world with new listings added every weekday. Check out what's available now at clarkrailworks.com and don't miss out on your latest loco. I'd like to send out a huge thanks to everybody who supports me on Patreon, but a special thanks go out to Anthony Kidson, Offshore Allen, Michael Lockie, Helen Sink, Gary Lewis, David Quinn, Sparky107107, George Botterini, Chris Moss, Robert Steers, Sam Yates, Dale Williams, John N. from NC, NYM Arish, Jonathan Foster, Peter, Clifford Ison, Larry W. Grant, NI Railways 4000 Class, Ian Coulson, Alan Dickerson, Eddie Popper, Karen Nicholl, Medwin Williams, Crossways Point Junction, 3B Rail, Jennifer Horton, Michael Rose, Trains with Nick, and Simon Snow. Thank you. Without you guys, I couldn't do this.